Hey guys, that was so weird. Why did I? So today I'm going to be doing a very highly requested video. It is a Hoya collection video. Let me just say, I have a lot of plants, so collection videos like this kind of overwhelm me, which is why I've been putting it off for so long. I have... <laughs> a lot of Hoya. In hindsight, I maybe shouldn't have pulled all of the plants into one area and I could have just walked around and shown you where each of the plants live, but you know what? I already moved them. Not going to move them back before filming. We're here. We're doing the thing. <laughs> Before we get into the video, as always, please watch this all the way through. Maybe click on to the next video as well if you're able. Thumbs up or thumbs down this video so I know if you like this kind of content. And then maybe leave a comment telling me which Hoya you have in your collection or maybe some that you didn't know existed that you've added to your wish list. I'm very interested to hear. I love me a good Hoya and you will see. <laughs> I do. Let's go look at all of my Hoyas. There's so many. I guess I'm just gonna go one by one and pull each plant and show you it and tell you a little bit about it. So up first we have Hoya Glabra. This was a rehab I got from my parents. They do import Hoyas and this is one that didn't arrive in great shape, but finally started pushing growth. The roots are definitely intact down there. It had absolutely no roots when it arrived and it has now put out this new leaf just recently as well as this long strand, this little arm thing. I forget what it's called, but I call them little arm things and it is, that's what it is. Okay, that's the plant. I really like it. Oh, look at the sun stressing like on the back of the leaf. That's so beautiful, right? And it's always nice when you rehab a plant and it does come back. So this one's kind of a sad story. This was an unrooted cutting I bought off Etsy. It's a variegated Hoya abovada. For some reason, it has started growing back reverted. Don't know why, but it is what it is, I guess. I guess that's just what had to happen. Don't get me wrong, I love abovada. It's one of my favorites. I just was hoping to have the variegated one, but that's the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. We don't get everything we want in life, am I right? Okay. This was another um, unrooted cutting I got. I bought from someone on Instagram and I believe it is a Kelly Montan. Kelly Montan? Ooh. Hasn't really done much. I actually think I need to water it. I got this one kind of recently. <gasps> Are you kidding me? It's so pretty. This next one is a Hoya Pan Choy. This is actually one of my top five favorites for sure. I love it. I think it's so, ooh, ooh, water's leaking out the bottom. I think it's so cute and this one actually grows very quickly. I know it looks like a small plant, but I have seriously taken so many cuttings off of these, this guy and it's just doing it. So, oh my gosh, look at how cute this little new leaf is. Right there, so cute and teeny tiny dirt on my hands. This one is another rehab my parents gave me. It is a Hoya Imperialis. I don't know really what's going on with it, but it is starting to improve. Each leaf gets better and better looking. Again, this had no roots whatsoever, but it now finally has roots. And I know that because it started pushing out new leaf growth, which is very exciting. And I love the wonky babies. I've talked about it a lot on my channel. The weirder the plant, the more I like it. So I love this little weirdo just like leans and is just bushy up here and then nothing down here. Excellent, excellent. Hoya breviolata, which was just a tiny little cutting I got from my mom's plant. I chopped each leaf individually. I'm going to do a video here soon about propagating Hoya and how to get like a more full Hoya plant. I chopped each leaf individually, rooted them individually, and then stuck them together in this pot. And now they're going to start growing. It does have roots. It just takes some time once you pull them out of sphagnum and get them in soil for them to continue growing. Bella, Hoya Bella, Louis Bois. I think is how you say it. This is another one of my favorites, but it is also one of the more uncommon ones I have. I love this plant. I think it's so cute, so cool, and actually really easy. I do find that Hoya Bellas in general are thirstier. Look at the leaves. They're all variegated and cool. You see that? Wow, wow. This is another one I've taken many, many cuttings from. Done pretty okay. It's a little bit bigger than when I bought it. Next up is one that was on my wish list for such a long time. It is a Hoya Sarawak and it is just perfect. When I got it, it was just the two main leaves you see here. And since it has pushed out this new leaf, which I'm actually going to cut this and send it to Heather Hoyas because I know she's been wanting one. Um, I guess I'll have to text her and see if she has one yet or not. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and make the chop here soon. It's kind of sun-stressed and really pretty. Oof, oof. 
Next is another one of my favorites. It is a Hoya Fichii. I don't know why, I just really love the veining of the leaves. This was like triple the size this summer and then I took so many cuttings for friends. I like kind of need to stop doing that, but it's fun to share. But also my plants like get smaller and smaller instead of bigger and bigger like most plants do. This one does get really beautiful sun stressing. It has a little bit remaining here. Um, it's kind of faded back because it is winter where I live now, but when it sun stresses the whole leaf, you can just see each intricate little teeny tiny vein in these. And I think that's why I love this one so much. Like the veining on these is really unique and just stands out. 10 out of 10 recommend if you're able to find one is what I think is a, oh, Hoya latifolia. This was a trade. This is a cutting from her plant. I believe it is a Hoya latifolia, although I could totally be wrong because I know there are two kinds that people like get confused with one another. So, but it's one of those. The thing about this one is it actually hasn't put out a new leaf for me. Again, it was an unrooted cutting. It definitely is, oh, you can see the roots coming out of the bottom right there little baby roots it has pushed out this long strand this arm which is nice uh oh and look right here it kind of looks like it's gonna get a leaf right here it kind of has a little green growth point i think i think it's gonna try and push out a leaf there so here's hoping everybody cross your fingers because that'd be cool kind of a weirdo again but i just Love it. Finley Sonii Nova. This one's a cross of some sort or like something. I don't even know, okay? I don't know anything, just ignore me. Um, This one's kind of weird. I bought this on Facebook Marketplace. It just kind of popped up even though I didn't even know it existed. And I kind of liked how modeled the leaves are. Like they're super modeled and wrinkly. I mean, you can see, I don't need to explain it. And I'm not very good at coming up with descriptor words. The freak is that? This was also unrooted when I got it and you can see it is very rooted. It has pushed out this new growth point. Oh my gosh, is that a peduncle? You guys, it has a peduncle. Oh gosh, it's teeny. I don't know if, you, oh, you can barely, barely see it right there. Exciting. This one's a very slow grower in my experience, but also I did get it unrooted. So maybe that's part of the reason. I don't know, Finley Sonia Nova. The next Hoya I'm gonna show you is another one of my favorites and if you're somebody that loves plant blooms this is one i highly recommend for you it is my i think it's species of finis bertoniae bertoniae oh. this thing is constantly blooming it kind of took a while for me to get the first like initial bloom but then once i did it hasn't stopped blooming since no matter the season I don't know if I just keep it like on the brink of death and that's why it keeps blooming, trying to survive. Right here, look, you can see how many peduncles there are just in this one little section. Ooh, it blooms a lot. I hate the way these blooms smell. They do leak like a sap a lot and I've had quite a few Hoya varieties bloom, but for some reason, this one in particular, like leaks a sap, leaks this nectar, whatever it is, more than the others. It's weird. It kind of smells like popcorn, but not like good popcorn, kind of like whiz popcorn. My only thing is the sap and the smell of the blooms. Please stop blooming. Stop it. All right, Kai's awake from his nap, so if you hear little baby sounds or little baby toy sounds, that's why. Okay, so this first one is a plant I rescued from Home Depot. It was severely neglected. You can see this was recently. It hasn't been watered in so long. Like, I don't even know how they neglected this plant so bad. I have watered it, but I'm waiting for it to wrinkle some more before I water it again. Anyway, kind of sad. It's okay, it's gonna be fine. Next up is my Hoya Crass, Crassa Petiolata. Crassi Petiolata, Crassi Petiolata. This one's really cute. This is again, another slow grower for me in my experience. It's such a cute plant. This is a new leaf and it did shoot this out since I had it, but I've had this thing for like four months and this is all it's done for me. So we'll see what happens in like the grow actual growing season. It's a little cutie though. Next we have what I believe is a Hoya Matilde. I could definitely be wrong about that. This is one I'm always asking on Instagram and I get like 10 different answers every time I ask but it is a very cutie little guy. I love the growth pattern. I like that it's reaching like this. Oh, I love it. It's actually kind of fuzzy. Does that mean it is a Matilde? Or does that mean it's a something else? I don't know, but it's cute, whatever it is, right? Hoya and Crassata. This was supposed to be a moon shadow, but when I got it in the mail, it was actually completely reverted and I haven't been able to get it back. So it's an Incrassata at this point, although there is like one slightly variegated leaf left. 
I mean, I like it, don't get me wrong, I like it. It's just not my favorite by any means. Right here is my Hoya Macrophylla, and I will say I've had this for almost two years now, I believe, and I was doing so fine with this puppy for so long, and then out of nowhere, it's just miserable. Out of nowhere, I don't know what happened. It put out this one really beautiful leaf, though. But then everything else is just kind of sad and floppy. I, I don't know what I've done. Hopefully I can bring it back to its former glory. I mean, seriously, all of the leaves just fell off. I'm assuming I either over or under watered it at some point. Oh gosh. Um, next up, Beakensis. This one's a little cutie. I love the speckled leaves. And this is actually a pretty fast grower. So this is another rehab I got from my parents and it didn't have any leaves or anything whatsoever. Um, but it has finally started growing. It was basically just a node and this is what we're left with so far. It has been almost a year since I got this from my parents, but I am happy with the progress because once it started putting out growth, it has really pushed a lot. So it took a long time to get it, but now that it's happening, it's happening quickly. And I think it's cute. Hoya Bella, this was also from Sabri who traded me for the Latifolia. Um, it was one little uh, branch and I chopped it up to make a more full plant and it's just doing the thing. If you want a really easy Hoya to start out with, 10 out of 10 recommended Bella. I will say it's a little bit more thirsty than other Hoya varieties, but it's so cute. Biggest Hoya of the bunch, my Hoya pubicalyx. It's so cute and just wild and I love really wild looking plants. Um, okay, so this is a Hoya mindarensis. I actually need to water it. It's a little bit thirsty. But I love how it's throwing these things. Um, it's getting new growth pretty quickly and doing relatively well. And it looks, it looks like kind of a basic plant, but it actually really stands out against the other Hoyas I have because the leaves are kind of like curly almost. Next up is a Hoya micrantha, which I actually bought this at the same time from the same person. I got the Mindarensis. And this one is definitely a lot slower of a grower. Oh look, it actually is getting some new growth up here. Hey. That's exciting. Next up is another kind of pubicalyx. This one is a little bit splashier than the other one, like the spots on it. And I actually think this is the one, the variety that turns pink. You're not really going to be able to see it on camera because it is so slight. This leaf here is one of the newer leaves and it has kind of a pink tint. Maybe you can see. I don't know what the name is of the pink one, but I think that's what this is. Oh, I could be wrong. I'm probably wrong. I'm just used to being wrong. It's fine. Next up is my Hoya Weedii, which I don't know why. This is one I sh really struggled with in the beginning, but now we are finally getting along. And it's very exciting. I'm so happy about it. And oh, this is such an easy propagator. I've propagated, this used to be like double or triple as long. I've propagated this thing so many times. So I have like a hundred of these down in my growth grow tent. This one is Hoya Crinkle 8, which is the variety I have struggled with the most out of anything ever. I've killed three of these. This is my fourth. I think I might have just killed this one by overwatering. And I think that's the issue I keep having with this one. I water it just as I do my Hoya Compacta and it dies. The leaves get mushy and like fall off like this. Crimson Princess. I don't know why sometimes some of the variegation comes in more yellow and some comes in more white. So if anybody knows why that happens, let me know, because I do prefer the more white leaves, but most of them come in yellow. I, why is that? This is my, oh, it's dripping. Um, Hoya Tequila Sunrise, oh gosh. This is kind of a newer one to my collection. Um, it has by now started pushing out this new growth point, which is really exciting. Next up is actually the first Hoya I ever got, and it's actually this exact plant. I managed not to kill it in the beginning of my Hoya collecting, which I killed a lot of Hoyas, but not this one. This is a Hoya abafada. I actually find this one to be a little bit slower of a grower. I just love the leaves. They're really smooth and have a little bit of speckling on them. Um, this is the Hoya compacta Mauna Loa, Mauna Loa. This I have talked about in many, many videos. I have had a hard time with it. We hate each other. Well, we're frenemies, you know? Like, I think it's beautiful, so, so beautiful, but, whew. ooh, it's a diva in my experience. This is a Hoya Australis. This is the fastest growing Hoya in my collection, even more than the pubicalyx I told you about earlier. This one actually bloomed for me this summer. You can see the peduncle right there. 
So that was really exciting. Next is Hoya Rattusa. This is actually one of the more unique looking Hoyas I have in my collection. I love the little leaves because they're like long and the ends are a little like heart bump or like butt shape. Next up is a Hoya Calistophylla. It has that deep veining. Next is another sad story of a Hoya and I that don't really get along. This is a Hoya Pinky. When I got this plant, it had leaves all up and down this and they've all fallen off. I do not know what it wants. I water it, all the leaves fall off. I don't water it, all the leaves fall off. So who even knows at this point, honestly, hopefully I can keep it alive hopefully it did shoot out this growth point which gives me a little bit of hope like this is pretty new and there are um little buds right there that i think are gonna be leaves <sighs> here's hoping but i'm not holding my breath or anything <laughs> next up is a hoya numularoides numularoides oides I think it also goes by Hoya pubea, pubea, really cool one. Okay, next up is another one of my favorites. This is a Hoya Australis Lisa. It's right on up there with my regular Australis. The leaves are so pretty. It grows really quickly, just like with the Australis. Oh, are you kidding me? That's so cool. But yeah, I love this plant. When I got it, it was like this big and I got it at the beginning of last summer. Okay, so this is a sad little um, cutting. Well, it was an unrooted cutting when I got it. But it is now rooted, which is good, I guess. But it just kind of is an awkward looking plant, like almost too awkward, you know, but this was at the top of my wish list for such a long time. I'm so happy to finally have it. I'm hoping it'll do well for me and start to push new growth points here soon. I want this, this little baby to get huge. Probably won't because my plants grow and then I take cuttings and share them with people, but you know, you get the idea. This is a Hoya Coronaria and I'm in love with it. It has quickly grown to be one of my top five favorites. I just think it's so cute. Seems to be doing well for me, which is always nice because that's not always the case, unfortunately. <laughs> as much as I wish it was, it's not. This here is my Hoya Shepherdii, which this is another one I struggled with in the beginning. We're now on better terms and we're speaking again, but uh, you can see it's not like the most full healthiest plant. Okay, so next up is my variegated Hoya Carii, which I am very proud of. This was a two leaf cutting. So I think sphagnum moss is kind of the trick to this for me anyway, I'm not saying for everybody, but for me, sphagnum just works really well in my like tendencies and watering habits it works really well it's growing it's taking forever but it's growing this is such a slow one another variety of hoi pubicalyx this is the royal hawaiian purple i like this one a lot because the leaves are a lot more narrow and pointy this one is extra pointy like you could like stab somebody with that so this is my david kamungii kamungii this one has been pretty pretty um, low maintenance. As you can see, there are little driplets of where I've taken cuttings for my friends. <laughs> uh, this plot would be so much bigger right now. This is the size it was when I bought it a year ago and now it's not done much. It has grown, but it still looks the same because I take too many cuttings all over the place. My Hoya Crimson Queen, and you can see how wrinkly it is. It needs watered so desperately. Um, I do recommend underwatering as opposed to overwatering, but this is just excessive. Would not recommend letting it get to this point because it can actually damage roots. Just throwing that out there. I usually don't let them get this bad. Okay, so this is my Hoya Lacunosa. This is actually one that I have several of, several full pots of because I love it. This is another one of my top five favorites. Don't ask me why. I really don't have a good reason why, I guess. I don't know. The leaves look like pubic calyx leaves. Oh, this is a Hoya Memoria, but they're like super thick and like sturdy. Like I can barely bend it. Yeah, I just think it's really cool. This is another one that blooms all the time. There's a peduncle there. They look pretty similar to the Bertone, Bertonii, but they are slightly different. I think these ones, oh, this isn't open, so I can't remember. I can't quite remember, but one of them is more yellow, one of them is more red. And bonus fern growing inside of this. Why can't I keep a fern alive when I try, but when it's in a plant like this, I can. This was actually a gift for when Kai was born from my favorite plant nursery here in Utah, Cactus and Tropicals. Really, really love it. So cute. So this next one is really sad and I have no idea. Like, I don't even know how to go about figuring out what this is. This one was just a cutting when I got it. It's a stick with one single leaf. It is rooted by now, but yeah, here's the main leaf. If you know what this is, please let me know. I have no idea. This raw her is my linearis. These started as small little cuttings from my friend Hannah. Thank you so much, Hannah. And they are now rooted and doing really well. I find this to be a very easy variety. I keep it in a south window and I water it like maybe once every couple of weeks. And that seems to do the trick. Another one of my favorites, not top five, but definitely up there. It is a Hoya Viola. 
This one actually was a two leaf cutting from my mom's plant. I really like the coloring of this one. It's very lemon lime green and the shape is super cool. Like this was a cutting that Ashley actually brought to me, Ahoya Curtisii. It has grown a lot, pretty small when she brought it and it's just shot off, okay? I keep it in direct light, which is why it's a little bit darker. I recently actually repotted it into this larger pot because it was in something like teeny tiny. The leaf shape is really unique and they have really cool speckling and spotting. So, oh look, this one's a heart. Can you see the little heart right there? So cute, a little tiger heart just for you, okay. This one is a Hoya Rangsan, Rangsan, and it's another really slow grower in my experience. I like how sturdy, again, the leaves are. I guess I have something for like really cardboard, sturdy, thick leaves. Although it's a slow grower, I still really enjoy this plant, and when it does grow, oh my gosh, that's gonna be a very exciting day. Okay, this is another one I have no idea. I know Ripple is in the name, but that's all I can remember, but that is just so cool looking. If you know what it is, please let me know. It kind of looks like it's gonna push some new growth right here, which is exciting, but for now it's just this awkward little one leafer, which is fine. I mean, I like the awkward plants, so the plants are just giving me what I want, I guess. This is my Hoya Rebecca. I love this. The new growth, it hasn't happened on the whole plant, but this new growth lately up here is really, really small and like compact, which I find so cute. I love that. I love that a lot. This is a Hoya Helwigiana. Helwigiana. It hasn't done a lot for me, but it's like, okay, it's there. So this is actually a peduncle that did not happen under my care. It's from the person that sent it to me, April from Unsolicited Plant Talks. I think this is such a cool one. I hope I'm able to get it to grow more this coming spring, summer season, because I think these leaves are so beautiful. Crone, I'm not sure how to say it, Croniana silver, super silver or silver. I'm not sure if there's a difference between silver and super silver. Pretty silver, so if it were one or the other, I'd say super silver. Next up is my Croniana black or dark Croniana. Ooh, again, I'm not sure of the name, but it's the dark, darker variety. It's actually kind of fading to a lighter green, but usually the foliage is pretty deep, dark green, like almost black, but I think where it's winter here and there's not very much sunlight, that's why it's kind of reverting a little bit. So hopefully it'll darken again in the summer, spring and summer when there's more sunlight to go around. Okay, here's another one that I asked on Instagram and I got so many different responses from people as to what it was. I think it's a Hoya Serpent but I'm probably wrong about that. I wanna say serpents. Oh look, there's a little peduncle. I missed the blooms on this one, but that definitely wasn't there when I got this. So that's cool. Oh my gosh, look at this tiny little leaf. Well, I guess it is a little bit fuzzy. I don't know, I wanna say it's a serpents. If you know, let me know. If you don't know, then stay tuned. It's one of the recent propagations I've potted up. So it is a one leaf cutting. I believe it's a Hoya Arc Boldiana or Arch Boldiana. It doesn't look like much right now, but one day, one day when it grows in a little more, it'll be something. Here is a, another plant that I have no idea what it is, although I wanna say it starts with a K. Like honestly, the name of this one is on the tip of my tongue. It's definitely in there. I just can't like pull it out. It's this one. This is the newest Hoya to my collection. Um, I just got it within the last month or so, two months maybe. We have a variegated, it's either a variegated Kentiana or Wayetii. I'm honestly not sure how to tell the difference. This one was so sad when I got it in the mail. It was like just a couple little strands, super shriveled and sad and the roots were like non-existent. And as you can see, two years later, it has now popped some new growth. This is my Hoya Potsii. I just can't not take cuttings and share them, but it's really cute. And when it grows later, oh. I didn't want it to touch me. I thought it was a bug of some sort. <sighs> that scared me. <laughs> but it was just a little fuzz ball because my dog's hair. Oh my gosh, look, you guys look, it's getting some new leaves. Oh, you cannot see. Let me take the clip off so you can see a little better. Cute, so tiny, but it's happening. Okay, next up is another one of my pride and joys. I worked so hard to get this to be a full plant. I bought a single stem. I think I think maybe it had like six leaves, three sets of two leaves total, and it was unrooted, okay? So here's what I did. I'll do a full video on this. I'm actually in the process of it. One day when these get really long, it's gonna be so cool. Okay, so this is a Hoya Marillii. I like it. I don't know if it likes me because nothing has happened. Hoya Bordenii. This is my favorite 
favorite variety to sunstress because it gets so dark. Like that is a deep, deep red. It's almost black and I love the veins stay a light green. So you can really, really see them. Like they just stand out. Okay, so I look different because it's a few days later. I just realized I was sitting down to edit this and I realized I left out a couple of my biggest Hoyas. I don't know how I forgot them. I'm just gonna throw them in now. So first here we have my Hoya Chelsea. This is another one of the first Hoyas I ever got. The leaves are like really stubby. Such a cool one. 10 out of 10 recommend this if you're able. Just right next to that I have my big just regular Hoya Carnosa, just the green one. Kind of does whatever it wants to. It's the home. A little basic one, but basic isn't bad. Like I said, there are definitely stragglers around the house that I didn't grab and some in my prop boxes that I didn't want to disrupt the roots. So I'll show those sometime, but not today. I know this video is really long winded, but if you stuck around to the end, I really appreciate it. It makes such a difference for me and my channel. It means a lot to me that you stick around and watch my stuff. Watch me talk about my plants because I love my plants and I love talking about my plants to you, so thank you. Let me know what you thought of this video. If you have any video requests, please leave them in the comments down below. That is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next one.